But again, who would be better equipped to really share their stories on how they've been using some of our machine learning services? Oh, so it's my absolute pleasure to invite up on stage Sita Sharma, who is the CTO of Shadi.com, who's going to share with us what they are doing with our machine learning service. So that, pleasure to have you. Thanks, Oliver. Can you hear me? Yeah. OK, cool. How does this work? Here we go. Hi, uh, I'm Siddharth Sharma. I'm the CTO of Shadi.com. I'm sure Shadi.com doesn't need too much of an introduction here, but anyway, I'll spend a few minutes telling you about who we are and what we do. Uh, we were founded in 2001, so we're quite a legacy company at this point. Uh, we have over 5 million success stories to our credit. Uh, we are currently serving about uh, 100,000 skipped heartbeats per day, or expressions of interest, as we call them. And uh, we are not for nothing known as the world's number one matchmaking service. Uh, and if all this sounds pretty cool, it is, but it comes with its own set of problems. Uh, we've been around for a long time, and uh, we don't really know, uh, or rather, what's coming next. Like, the whole world has changed, technology has changed, society has changed in all the years since we've been around. So is this business model still going to be relevant in the future? Uh, we don't really know. Um, where will the next five million success stories come from? Are they going to come in the same way that they've always been coming? Uh, we don't know. Um, since we are matchmaking at scale, we have some pretty tough competition, which didn't used to exist when we started out. Uh, Tinder, for sure. Facebook has just gotten into the dating game. So uh, there's some pretty tough competition out there. And uh, but one thing we're pretty certain of is uh, we're going to continue to be the world's number one matchmaking service. But in order to do that, um, we're going to have to do certain things right. Um, we also happen to be profitable and growing, which again sounds like a great thing, but that also comes with its own set of problems. Um, we don't have unlimited VC money to throw at uh, tools. We have to be very, very frugal with uh, everything that we do. We have to protect our bottom line. Uh, we are a privately held company, uh, and so our investors take a lot of interest in uh, precisely our financial metrics. Um, we can't grow without making mistakes, uh, but at our scale, mistakes can be expensive. As we found out, we had once uh, badly configured our DynamoDB database write capacities, and we found that uh, even small mistakes can be quite expensive. Um, our users are also on all of these apps, FB, Instagram, etc. They have huge teams working on amazing UX, and we need to provide them uh, an amazing UX as well if we are to stay relevant. And growth is wonderful. Um, but only if your systems can keep up with it. And we run a fairly large mix of human and machine um, effort to keep, uh, this, to keep ourselves relevant and to keep our users um, engaged and uh, to drive their uh, partner searches. So what do we need to do to remain relevant? We need to keep iterating uh, on our product. It's a consumer product. Uh, iteration is constant. and. Uh, so c consumer demands keep changing, so we need to uh, keep moving fast to, to satisfy those demands, and we need to remain financially viable while we do so. And for a moment now, I want to talk to you about uh, my favorite city. I live in Mumbai. How many people here from Mumbai? Right. So I want to tell you Mumbai is not my favorite city. It's my second favorite city. My favorite city is actually Velocity because this is the one thing you need as a consumer internet uh, company to remain relevant and to uh, beat off the competition. And I, I want to tell you something about Velocity through the means of a case study uh, about a thing that we built in-house called uh, Falcon Eye View. Falcon Eye View is our uh, marketing automation platform. So you know sending out notifications, sending out uh, emails, uh, kind of retargeting people, getting them to come back, increasing engagement, that's the kind of thing that a marketing automation platform does. Um, our current or legacy marketing automation platform was uh, 12 years old. Uh, nobody really knew how it worked anymore, and it was time to rewrite it. Uh, we couldn't just use a standard e-commerce uh, marketing automation platform because uh, this is a consumer-to-consumer -consumer business, and uh, as someone put it quite succinctly on shadi.com, sometimes, the the, sometimes your shopping cart visits you. Uh, so it's like you're also the product at the same time. 
Um, and so m many of the things that we evaluated uh, turned out not to really fit our use case. And besides, at our scale, they were prohibitively expensive. So we had no option but to build our own uh, uh, marketing automation platform. And I'm happy to say so that using uh, these tools, Kinesis, SQS, SNS, Lambda, ECS, CloudWatch, the usual suspects, we managed to build a pretty robust uh, marketing automation engine which actually performs about 10x better than the previous one. Um, and when we looked at how much it cost us, we were like really pre pleasantly surprised. Like right now, about 30% of our campaigns are migrated onto this new uh, marketing automation tool, and we pay the princely sum of $350 for Kinesis and uh, Lambda fees. Um, we were also actually super pleasantly surprised. Like this, these things, they actually work as advertised because we spent zero time thinking about infrastructure issues. The Lambda just scales out. Uh, as I said, there was one campaign that used to take 38 hours to finish. It now finishes in four hours. It could go even faster. It's not, it's not because Lambda can't scale. It's because the rest of our infrastructure or even the way we want the consumers to receive those notifications means we actually don't want to send them all out at one, uh, at one instant. And uh, so AWS allowed and we did it in a matter of a few months um, and uh, without breaking the bank. So that's one of the ways in which we, which we leverage some of these AWS services. Um, we also uh, dipped our toes in the, in the ML waters and then we like splashed right in because the water was fine. Um, as we all know, when it comes to matchmaking, first impressions really matter and uh, if you want to begin a relationship or get the chance to make a second impression, it really helps to make a great first impression. And the way that happens on most matchmaking sites is through your photos. Photos are hard. Nobody wants to spend time waiting for their own photos to be curated and uh, moderated. And uh, this was a problem for us because uh, let's say if you want the hypothetical case of two people looking for love and looking to get married, uh, when you upload your photos, uh, we actually had a, an army of people uh, moderating photos and cropping them to fit the various sizes because people don't always upload photos with their face in the center or they'll upload a long shot and you need to, you know, kind of, there's some intelligence involved there to present our customers in the best possible light. And, uh, or sometimes someone's very proud of what they've done in the gym and they want to put up a photo like this. Um, so that doesn't always work for all our customers. So we kind of moderate photos that are a bit too edgy for our more traditional customers. And even if everything is fine, uh, you still need to spend effort in actually cropping uh, the photos, resizing them and so on and so forth. So earlier we were, pehle hum bahut pareshan the, fir humne AWS recognition apnaya. Um, I remember I was doing a, some computer vision back in 2014 and all of this seemed like science fiction at the time. It's like uh, the amount of effort you had to put in to get even basic computer vision was uh, prohibitively expensive and really, really difficult to do. But now uh, it's actually available to anyone with an internet connection and a credit card. So. That's pretty amazing. Um, so this is how we use uh, uh, so the, the machine learning al algorithms of uh, recognition. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is moderate the, uh, the content. Uh, now, admittedly, this is just a picture of Virat Kohli at work on any given day. But uh, again, as I said, it uh, perhaps not, uh, not uh, Would you marry a person who tried to do this? I mean, they clearly have no scruples and can't be trusted. So, but anyway, people try to do this uh, to avoid paying our very reasonable subscription charges. And we need to uh, moderate these. Um, so I can neither confirm nor deny that Ms. Rai has been a Shadi.com customer, but I can confirm that several hundreds of people have attempted to upload her photo instead of their own. So, so we kind of need to make sure that people are telling the truth about themselves and not pretending to be someone that they aren't. And that's another way in which we, uh, uh, which we use ML. Um, and even if everything is 
all good, and you submitted a good photo, uh, high-res photo with everything uh, perfect for a traditional kind of matchmaking um, purpose, uh, we still need to scale and crop them to fit all our uh, various um, use cases, mailers, small profile picture, big profile picture, mobile app, et cetera, all of these. Um, and so we actually ended up with a 95% reduction in photo screening time. Uh, we've actually improved the, our customer satisfaction around how the photos are and how they look, and everyone happy and hopefully lives happily ever after. So thank you. Thank you. What a great story. And I, and I like how Sadat has described around you know, how quickly we can iterate an API call away and we can access to computer vision models. But I figured let's spend